Hello, everyone, and welcome in again to Perspectives, the home edition. This used to be my dining room. Now it's more like a television studio. And I'm still married. Can you believe that? <laughs> my wife's letting me get away with it. Um, we have an unusual topic to bring you today, and one I think is going to just nail your ears back, so stick with us on this. Uh, first of all, let me introduce our guests. Uh, Dr. Ken Sharp, musical director of the Tulsa Chorale. Dr. Sharp, good to have you with us, my friend. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Sam. And Michelle Place with the Historical Society. Dan, Michelle, good to see you again. Glad to be here. There is a thing called, and not by thing, I, I just a piece of music there, called The Armed Man. That's its title. It is a mass for peace. It was written by a Welsh composer. Uh, his name is Sir Carl Jenkins. He was knighted by the Queen back in, uh, let's see, 2015, I believe, was the date. And it's going to be performed here in our town. This is an incredible piece of music. It is going to be performed here in May. As I understand it, folks, uh, Dr. Sharp, is that May 8th the uh, date? That's correct, Sam. This mass is a work of uh, great proportions in the sense that it embraces cultures from around the world uh, toward this message of peace. And I believe that music adds the emotions and the uh, feelings uh, that we really want to express when it comes to um, uh, various aspects of life. But the idea of expressing peace through music is a challenge. And I think Carl Jenkins has done this very well. He's gathered um, poetry from various cultures and he's put it together in this historic form of the Latin mass to make it a universal statement. And so I, we want to bring it to Tulsa as we uh, approach this uh, commemoration of the Tulsa race riot and then the massacre and uh, look at uh, peace through that lens through this piece of music. As it was originally put together and formed, it's my understanding it was for the victims of Kosovo, is that correct? That's correct. It was a commission for the festival. Uh, and I discovered it when I was on sabbatical in England uh, uh, a while back. Uh, I was driving through the Cotswolds and heard uh, a movement from this mass, and I had to pull over to the side of the road and actually listen to the conclusion. And then I went to the first town I could come to, and I went into a music store and said, what was this piece of music that I just listened to? It was that compelling to me. So when um, we began thinking about what would be appropriate and what would be the right piece uh, for this commemoration year in uh, Tulsa's life, this is the piece that came to my mind. Well, it's uh, from all indications, you're going to have a huge audience. Michelle, uh, what, you're with the Historical Society. What's your connection with this performance? Well, the Tulsa Historical Society and Museum, like many other organizations in Tulsa, is certainly trying to do our part and to participate in the commemoration of such a horrific time in Tulsa's history. Uh, I have a great proclivity for arts and culture and music and firmly believe that music uh, is something that um, is a great way to commemorate. It's music and arts are the things that really endure throughout the ages. I happen to have some friends who sing with the Tulsa or um, now, sorry, the Tulsa Corral. They have a new name, and uh, I believe in collaborations. And not only are we helping to promote and to support this beautiful piece of music, which will be performed. Um, but we want to tell the story of how Tulsans are working through these days of COVID. And so some of the things that you will see um, it are pieces, uh, film, video from 
the rehearsals and where the singers are masked. Uh, so that will also tell the story of these days. Will they be masked during the performance? We will perform with masks. We are rehearsing with masks. Uh, we're rehearsing with uh, distancing. We also uh, rehearse in small groups, and then I repeat the rehearsal for another small group so that we don't have uh, a, a large group in the room at the same time. And we also clear the room with a distance between each group that comes in just to do every precaution we can do. We have added uh, air filters to our rehearsal process, um, and we, of course, do temperature checks. So we're doing everything we can do to keep safety first for our singers, but it's very important for them. Uh, they want to continue to express, and we want to continue to express. I also stream my rehearsals so that folks that don't feel comfortable uh, coming to the actual rehearsal can rehearse uh, at home at, at a distance. So we're doing everything we know to do to keep safety and to keep healthy, but also to keep our art alive. Michelle, to get the word out on this, you have a monumental task ahead. Um, I'm assuming you're going to push every button and pull every lever. Am I correct? Um, we it, absolutely. We will be participating in marketing this piece to the community and beyond um, through our social media, um, particularly, but not only through the Tulsa Historical Society and all who are on our Facebook pages or. Instagrams, but the Tulsa Corral will be doing the same thing. Um, so we also hope to use um, this footage that we put together in talking about the piece uh, in other settings. It's also being captured for posterity that this was 2020 and 2021. Dr. Sharp, what can we do to ensure that the folk un who are going to hear this understand exactly the importance of the armed man. Well, the armed man, uh, the name itself comes from a tune that is, um, was very popular in as long ago as the medieval times. This was a tune that apparently people on the street knew, kings knew it. It was a very infectious tune. So many composers used this tune to be the basis for masses and other works that they wrote. Uh, Carl Jenkins chose this tune to start the piece for a very important reason, and that is, look, look how long uh, the arts have been a part of our culture and, and, and how important they are to every aspect of our culture, from kings down to peasants in the medieval times. Um, the arts are one of those things that have we've sorely missed during the pandemic. We've been pulled away from live performances, and I believe psychologically and I believe uh, communally that we're suffering because of that. And so uh, I think it's very, very important for us to, to um, embrace the arts at this time because they really do give us identity. They, they bring us uh, into an understanding of our, the feelingful side of life. And, and we all need to express that right now. And, and I believe we offer that possibility. So this, this work represents a historic sweep um, uh, of times that have in the past that have known war, that have known plagues, that have known pandemics. And we're bringing it back into play as we look at a very specific topic in, in Tulsa's history. So I think it really expresses our local story, but it also expresses a human story and a significance over time. It, it's a unique work that I think does this uh, uh, in a way that I, I can't think of any other piece that I could choose to both bring our event into focus, but also our connection to humanity. So uh, I'm very excited about it, and I believe people will find it immediately uh, compelling when they hear it. When you discovered it for the first time, you were out of country. And it so moved you, as you told us, you had to pull over and hear it to conclusion, and then you hurried on down to the, the music shop, as they say, to pick up a copy. It's been performed in this country before, has it not? It has. It's been, it's really a very popular work for a classical work as young as this work is, 
usually you think classical works have to have the benefit of time to, to become uh, very popular, but this work caught on immediately, and I think it's for a couple reasons. One, it's, uh, it's got some tunefulness and some harmonic uh, work in it that makes uh, even people that think they don't care for classical music, it completely draws them in. The composer, Carl Jenkins, is just as well known as a jingle writer as he is a classical musician. He's written uh, songs that have been featured by the De Beers Diamond Company as their commercial. He's written themes that have been used by Delta Airlines for their commercials. So you know this person has a gift of melody and a, a gift of the earworm that he can write a tune that will stick with people. But he's also a classical musician, uh, as you said, knighted um, uh, for his work in a great composition. So it's got all the hallmarks of a, of a classic work in terms of uh, its composition. So it, it really appeals to such a wide range of audience uh, is another, the universal, universal nature of it was another reason why I wanted to do this work. You didn't, you did say it was performed uh, in, after 9-11? It, it actually came out, the recording of the work was released by a major recording label the day after 9-11, of all things. And, uh, you know, that took us, of course, by surprise and by terror. Uh, but mm -hmm. that is another reason I'm drawn to it is because that work had a significant moment after 9-11. And I believe it fits our uh, Tulsa massacre uh, situation uh, very well in its ability to both focus on the horrors of war and the horrors of that event, and then bringing reconciliation and peace, the message of peace, to, uh, to uh, the story as well. Most folks don't understand because, you know, we, we live in an area that has been the, uh, the center of the universe, in some cases, of certain music styles. Newcomers to this part of the world don't really have a grasp of that, but they're finding out about it. One of the things that have a, that I've seen occur happened when, and I hearken back to my college days, there was a fellow named uh, Asad Nelibel, who was the director of Radio Free Europe, who was also a composer uh, slash director. He wrote a prelude and fugue that we had the opportunity to play uh, when I was in school, and he was the director mm. of the piece that he wrote. Now, if you played it, you didn't hear what happened. But the final note of the symphony was one loud tone, as though a hammer struck a bell, as clear and as precise as you can imagine, and in tune. So there are pieces that this sort of phenomena speak to, there are pieces that the armed man and pieces like it speak to. Uh, I don't know that many rise to the same level as the armed man, but they speak more to the heart. Am I correct on this reading? I think you are. I think that's the gift that the arts bring is they connect us to our emotions. Uh, it's one thing to think or to say a group of words and even in a religious or a secular context to say a speech, but when you set it to music, when rhythm and when melody and harmony enter into uh, uh, the picture, then we connect with our emotions. And um, that's important. I mean, we have an intellectual life, but we have an emotional life. And the arts do that for us. They are, for me, the language of the emotions. And this piece will strike the emotions. Uh, you know, Nellie Bell, interesting composer, uh, very great brass writing that came from him. This piece has a brass section that is going to bring the uh, sounds of war uh, to mind because he wrote very purposefully the terror of, uh, that comes out of war. And the poetry speaks to some of the terror. There's a, a poet from a Japanese survivor of Hiroshima that comes to a climactic moment and uh, in which after this big, big uh, war scene takes place, we have to stop for 30 seconds and just pause because he's trying to imitate the aftermath of a bombing, which is this terrible quiet period that would happen after a bombing. And I've never seen a work that can capture that 
like this piece does. And you have to really be in the room, as you say, to experience that. But it does draw emotions in a, uh, uh, a way that I, I would say is a safe thing. I mean, it's a, it allows us to deal with our emotions in a, a very safe environment. And that's what the arts do for us. You know, M Michelle, as I listen to uh, the good doctor speak, I am struck by the fact that you sometimes have to play catch up to retrieve historic events or historic items. But in this case, you're right on the edge of watching it happen, aren't you? You're going to see history unfold. I am. This is a very different um, position for me. That's, that's a, a lovely way to put it. Uh, one of my friends accuses me or describes me often as I tend to look back because that's the nature of what I do professionally. Sure. And so uh, to be able to participate in something in the present with this history in mind, I think the words for me that articulate would be um, history helps us meet our future. And so by this- Well said, well said. Thank you. This type of, of work musical composition once again reminds us that war has been with us for a long time, that much of history is about somebody pounding on somebody else and taking their stuff. And so you can look at different periods of history and, and I like to look for those stories of the human condition. What did it take to move into that next moment? What kind of courage? what kind of tenacity, what kind of hard work, what kinds of dreams did people dream of peace and a better future for their children? I think those themes are enduring. And here we have this piece of music that is going to so beautifully encapsulate that idea of war has been with us many, many times, but we need to work for peace. And I think that's what the commemoration of 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre is about. It's all about, well said, well said. Well, we're going to take a, a short pause. And in that pause, uh, our director is going to roll in uh, a bit of the music. And when we come back, we're going to talk about where and when uh, folks in this part of the country can hear it live. So we're going to stop okay. talking just for a moment and let the folks at home get an idea of what the arm man is all about. No, no, no. 